Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about five out-of-character things that annoy your RP partners. So we've talked about in-character things that annoy your RP partners, but today we're going to talk about things that happen out of character. Now, all of these things are going to be things that happen once you've started to role play with someone. So if you want information on how to ask someone for role play or look for role play without being annoying, I've got a whole video on that about how to ask for role play. So I'll link that up on the card. Um, I'll also make sure that linked up in the card somewhere in this section is the in-character version of this video. So you can check that out if you want to. The first thing that we're going to talk about is showing impatience. Role play is a hobby and nothing makes a hobby feel more like work than adding in a deadline. Now before we get further into this, I want to make this clear. You can't not reply for months and months and expect your partners to stick around. If you take a really long time to reply or you flake out on RPs constantly, you're going to lose partners simply because people lose interest. Attention spans don't last forever. Conversely, if you're regularly asking your partners where the reply is or when they're going to reply, they're going to start to feel like role play is work and it's going to be really annoying for them. And what you're going to end up with is a situation where they don't want to reply. My advice is if someone isn't replying as quickly as you want them to, then maybe consider that they're not the partner for you. So move on to someone that fits your pace better. We're all busy. We all have other responsibilities and obligations that we have to take care of. Maybe that person isn't responding because they really can't reply as fast as you want them to. And remember, you bothering them about it isn't going to make them reply faster. So you might be thinking on this particular topic, what if my partner is replying to other people faster than me? Still, don't bother them. We're all human, which means we have favorites. And yeah, it sucks to be neglected by a partner that you really like and you're really excited to role play with. It does, that feels really terrible. But pestering them about replying isn't going to suddenly make you into one of their favorites. Instead, Try to fill your time with other partners and find partners where you're mutually each other's favorites. Next, let's talk about overall negativity. We've all been there where we have a partner where we really like role playing with them, but every time we talk to them about their day or what's going on with their life, it's complaining or just generally bad stuff over and over and over. We've also probably been on the giving end of this. Life isn't perfect. Sometimes you have a string of bad luck or just bad things happen or you're just generally in a negative place. And it is healthy to not bottle those things up and to talk about them with others. So it can be really tempting to lay that on your role play partner, especially if you're somebody that role plays daily or, or you know, close to daily. So what I'm talking about is where negativity becomes a habit, where it's the majority of your conversations that you're having, or it's something that goes on for a long stretch of time. So think of this as like chronic negativity. And when it comes to role play, although lots of us make friends with our partners and are happy to do that, we're primarily here to role play. So when you have a partner that's constantly complaining and constantly negative, it can make role playing with that person feel like a chore. No one wants to log in and have their pretendy fun times and instead be greeted with a bunch of negativity. There's probably stuff going on in their life that they're feeling bad about and want to avoid for a little bit as well. If you find yourself being overly negative every time you talk to your partners, consider possibly what other outlets there are for the negativity. For example, see if you can focus those negative conversations with just one or two friends that really are there for you to handle it and are happy to do so, and with your other partners, instead of focusing on the negativity, focus on role playing. And of course, if it's really serious, if you're dealing with depression, anxiety, something like that, find a therapist. I'm sure that your RP partners love you and want to help you, but they can't be your RP partner and your therapist at the same time. The next thing you might be doing to annoy your partners is overt attention seeking. This is sort of like being impatient, but with a different motivation. Now, of course, we all want attention and that's perfectly normal, but what I'm talking about are behaviors that are asking for attention with no other motivation. 
Now, we're all busy people with other things in our lives, and I know I'm saying that like over and over in this video, but that's what a lot of it boils down to is, is that. So what that means is when you demand attention from your partners, you're potentially causing them burnout. And this is because then they're there for you because you asked for it, not because they want it to be. So what does this look like? When you send your partner a message, make sure it's for a reason. For example, just saying hi or how are you isn't really purposeful except to chat. Think about what do you want to chat about? Is there something you want to tell them or show them? If so, send them that instead of just hi, because all hi communicates is I want to talk, and that could give the impression of please give me attention. And I get why people do this. They're bored, they're lonely and they want friends, or some other reason like that. But the quickest way to make sure that you don't actually make friends with people you know online is to be disrespectful of their time. So before you send that next hi, think about why you're messaging that person and if sending hi is really the best way to achieve that goal. And if you do this, I'm sure you're gonna be able to send better messages that actually engage that person that you're wanting attention from and then you're gonna get the attention that you're looking for. Next, let's talk about blurring the line between mun and muse. This is something I see a lot when people start role-playing or when they role-play a lot of self-inserts. You get invested in your character and you start thinking of them in the same way that you might think about a pet or a child and you just want the best for their little fictional life. And fundamentally, this is fine. Where it becomes a problem is when you're so attached to your character that you can no longer put them in challenging or painful situations because it becomes painful for you personally. And what this can turn into is when your partner's character hurts your character's feelings, it can start to feel like your partner hurts your feelings instead of it being the character. And at the end of the day, what's satisfying about stories is overcoming challenges. If there's no challenge, there's nothing to overcome and there's no satisfaction. So when you blur the line between Mun and Muse in this way, what it can turn into is something where you only ever want to do fluffy coffee shop AUs. And while those are fun, that's not going to keep a long-term partner. At best, your partner's going to get bored. And at worst, your partners will be annoyed that they're never allowed to do anything your character doesn't like. Either way, Chances are that you're not going to retain partners long term if you don't have a clear line between Mun and Muse. And the last thing I want to talk about, so thing number five, is vaguing. So vaguing happens a lot on social media platforms where people role play, but it can happen in other areas too. So what do I mean by vaguing? So what I mean is, say someone that you role play with or some role player that you know did something that you don't like. And what you decide to do is post about it without naming them. So you're venting a little bit, but it's public. So if you're role playing on Twitter, for example, this would be an out of character tweet saying like, I hate when people do such and such or something of that nature. Or if you're on Discord, maybe it's talking about someone on a server that they're not in. Now, on one hand, you might say, this is healthy. It's not good to keep all of this inside and you're just venting. But you know what's way healthier than vaguing? Talking to that person. Plus, vaguing has a really detrimental side effect. What you're doing when you vague is showing how you deal with disappointment. So now everyone knows it's only a matter of time before you do it to them when they inevitably disappoint you. And concurrently, if the person that you're talking about ever sees it, and if you keep doing this, they will definitely see it, then what you've done now is upset them when instead you could have gone to them privately and talked about it and sorted it out and got to a solution without upsetting them. Because essentially what you've done is put them on blast publicly if anyone else figures out who you're talking about. Also, when it comes to vaguing, because you aren't naming who you're talking about, then other people that you're not talking about could read it and think you're talking about them. And then where does that leave you? Now you've damaged relationships with potentially multiple roleplay partners. Instead, where if you just DM the person in question, then the only person you're risking damaging your reputation with is that one person. So the point is, there's no good reason to vague when the situation could be solved in a DM. 
Even if you're thinking, well, sometimes I don't really want to solve the problem, I just want to vent, that's fine. Message a friend, message a mutual friend that is okay with you venting to them. But just remember, for certain situations that might need solving, the longer that you don't talk to this person about the situation, the longer the situation is going to go on, the more resentment is going to be built up until there will be a point of no return that the solution can't be reached. So that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know down below, what are some other annoying out of character things that people do in the role play community? I'm really curious kind of what things maybe I didn't touch on, maybe things like that don't annoy me in particular. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.